Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So hi, everybody. I, I got to remember not to look up, but to look at the screen. Hi, everybody. I'm just testing this with my, oh, that's my wife <laughs> with the rabbit ear. She does that in photographs too. <laughs> so I'm, um, I'm just testing this out. Oh, I can move the arrow from my face. Um, testing this out to see if I can do this with my laptop. So actually the picture looks really clear when I was doing the test of my camera. It looked terrible. So I was like, yeah, I'm not going to do it. But this looks really good. So uh, let me know how it looks to you guys. And I thought what I'd do is this is just a test to see if I can do it. So that now when I look up at my monitor, so straight ahead is my laptop but above me is my monitor i can actually see the live chat so if oh, you guys it's over there yeah oh, it's over here <laughs> it's there <laughs> so um yeah so i can uh, i can read it and still do what i'm doing and what i'm going to do is now you can see my face but what i'll do is i'll tilt the screen down and you can actually see what i'm working on so hopefully um, I'm trying to think if there's a way to enlarge this. Let me see if this works. No. Um, you don't have a zoom on your camera, I don't think. Let me see if I have any settings with the camera. I'll have to look this up. Um, but I guess what I'll do is I'll just bring it up close to show you. So this is the bracelet that I started. It's peyote, and I wonder if I have too much light on everything. It's really reflecting the light pretty bad. So that's the um, Swarovski crystal, and I managed to weave it in to the peyote. So it's actually right in there. And hi, Miss Martha. Hi again. <laughs> Definitely doing the happy dance. <laughs> So this is uh, becoming uh, a lot of fun and maybe uh, a little bit addictive <laughs> to do. Uh, can you tell I'm feeling lonely? It's like, I want to talk so to some saying, people. I'm saying I'm going to see even less of you. Oh, my wife's saying she's going to see even less of me. <laughs> I thought you were going to be busy for the next two hours. <laughs> I guess I have to be now. Two hours. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, what I want to do is I'm getting ready to do a toggle for this. And um, I somebody suggested that I do a square class. Bye, honey. <laughs> My wife's like, oh, God, I lost her. That's it. She's done. Okay, so I, I'm just going to start working on this. Yeah, so somebody mentioned about doing, let me know if you can hear me okay, uh, Martha, um, because it's using the microphone on my laptop and I don't know how good it is. So I need some of these. These uh, hematite tohos, they're called treasures, number one. They are beautiful. They almost have a blue tinge to them. So these are... Um, and uh, yeah you can tell I've been using them I have another one of these so I'm set if I end up doing the square can hear you fine thanks Stacy awesome thanks Martha that's good so I'm just gonna go ahead with this so that was so much fun earlier but what I was doing was I had my tablet and I would touch on the screen and and move my finger up and that was the only way I could get the comments to be seen. But now, like I said, here's my laptop right in front of me, but behind it, I have a, like a, it's a television that my wife set up and hooked into my laptop so I can see it's a huge, huge. And I can see, um, so the comments are so big for my, my, uh, poor eyesight <laughs> so I can read the comments while I'm working here so yeah so this is fun so I'm wondering how you guys are doing uh where are you Martha and Stacy what's the weather like there I mean the weather here it's been really cold and um 
we had a snowstorm the other night, so there's snow everywhere right now, but it doesn't really make much difference to me because oh, I did this wrong. I forgot to skip one. And I'm looking, I have one of these like little tiny beads. Sometimes you get them. I'm going the wrong way here. Take this off. Um, yeah, you get these tiny beads and hopefully you won't notice it once it gets spun around. Let me put those out. Hi, Anita. <laughs> so, you, uh, I Ithaca, yeah, you guys got a lot of snow, didn't you? I think the storm was passing by you guys and then heading towards us. Okay. I, I um, this is the first time I've used the camera on my uh, laptop. I have my laptop hooked up to this television monitor that my wife mounted to the wall. So I actually never leave the lid of my laptop open and I'm looking at it. It is so dusty. And this is... Um, this is a little easier working in front of the camera, but it's not much good to you guys to see. So I'll have to figure out if there's a way I can enlarge this. I don't see anything like right that's glaring at me to get bigger here. So. And I can't remember how to do this end bit here. And of course the stop bead's kind of big and it's in the way. Let me see if this did it. So what I did with this Oh, there, I got it. I guess I do know how to do it. So this is the, what I'm working on. Interestingly enough, so I probably went a little overboard on this side. <laughs> it looks really long. So right now for my wrist, this is what it looks like. So it fits, but of course this side's shorter than the other side. So it's kind of off to the side. So I thought what I would do is do the toggle on this part and then the clasp on this part. So the clasp will come out a little bigger and do like a square. So, and then what I did for this, for the toggle, because I, I did one for the design um, that like uh, Stephanie's bracelet. And I'm, I'm looking to see if I can see it in one of these bins and I can't find it. Oh, it's over here, but um, yeah, it's right here. So I found that the toggle was a bit short for this. So this was the, this one's gorgeous. Oh, actually, no, I did do it bigger. So I must have thought of that. And probably what I did, it's probably not my thinking. I probably followed Stephanie's directions as how many to put on. So, yeah, I, I think the idea is with the, the toggle for it to be bigger so you can slide it through the hole. So, yeah, this one is, I got to put it together. It's turned it really nice. And this is the... cabochon that's going to go in the middle and then I have another look at all these I leave all the threads I think I'm going to stop doing that because this is like you see the threads here this is crazy so that's the second side and then I have that so I'm going to put this together 
Let's see. So let me see what everybody is. Um, Washington State. Ah, hi. Raining. Hi, Maria. <laughs> I, uh, I'm glad that you're there because I just read your comment in the, um, the other live that I did this morning. So I'm glad you're here. Hi, Juanita. Oh, man. Anita took me till noon to get my car died out so I can go to work. Oh, that sucks. Man, that's frustrating. So how is work? That's the one thing Jen and I keep saying. It's amazing that, thank goodness we're not working. I tell her, like, if I was working, and you know what? Instead of seeing my hands, I'm going to turn this up so you can see me. Because I'm really not doing anything <laughs> for the beating. I'm like, oh, I'm going to do it this way. So I can read the comments and do my beating at the same time. And it's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe I should just do it this way. Um, oh, hello, Helen from Queensland, Australia. That's awesome. Yeah, so my wife and I have been saying, if, if I was working, I'd be working in the hospital right now. So I'm kind of fortunate that I'm retired. But, so yeah, yeah. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything that uh, I need to talk about because this was just I did did this as an idea to um, to test my laptop of using the um, the tablet. Oh, here's the other thing. So people mentioned they were having problems uh, reaching me, or the video kept uh, glitching, and that's my my tablet. So that's another reason for trying this. This way, my uh, laptop is hooked into a booster that boosts the, uh, the Wi-Fi signal. Because we have issues with the metal in the house. And I mentioned that before. Um, it was an elderly lady that uh, lived in, um, in the house. And uh, she was schizophrenic and had a contractor put six layers of metal on all the walls. So this wall next to me, you can see kind of the wood finish. There's plywood on top of and paneling on top of the six layers of metal. I don't think you can, there's nowhere you can see the metal. But um, so of course, right there is the wall. So any, the this, this signal comes from the basement up where the modem is. So we need the, we have these little, um, I don't know if you can see them. They're little boosters that they gave us to uh, increase the signal. But So this is definitely working a lot better. Ah, oh, Anita, work is rough. I work as a home health, air, health aide, so I have to go. But I had to cancel my first two before I could get out. Yeah, I guess. If you're having problems with your car. So Maria, here in Spain, the government had to ask retired nurses and doctors to help during the first lockdown. You know, I was wondering about that. I am um, just up the hill from us. We have two nursing homes and we go for walks and uh, it makes me like it makes me feel bad. I wish I could go in and help. But um, yeah, there's there so far there hasn't been a call to people for people to go back to work. Um, and I've been retired for 12, 18 years now. So not that I would forget any of my skills. And one of the things I think I could easily do, especially in nursing home care, is um, feed patients and toilet patients and stuff like that. So I would definitely totally do that. So, yeah. So yeah, we should do, so again, this was just meant as a test, so I probably won't be on for long, and the only reason I say that, I would totally sit here and chat with you guys, but 
Uh, I definitely don't want to overstay my welcome and uh, bore you guys to death. <laughs> but the idea was to maybe test stuff out. And um, so as for like showing you what I'm doing with the beading, I don't, I'll try it again and see, but it's, uh, it's kind of hard to see what I'm doing, especially with the color of these beads that I'm using. The dark ones are pretty hard to see. So, but, yeah. And I, I gotta learn to get my fingers out of the way. So maybe bigger projects, like where they actually have bigger beads and stuff. Maybe um, some leather wrap bracelets because yeah, I don't know. We'll see. I have a, um, a hero cam that I could probably hook up to my laptop that might work for this as well. And it might be a bit better. So that's the thing with the, um, um, with the tablet is I can enlarge stuff easily with the tablet. So but Miss Martha says, my heart and prayers are with all of you healthcare workers, definitely. And all the people that are still out there working and, you know, getting food to us and keeping the economy going. And I mean, we're all doing our part for this. It's, I just, sometimes I, usually when we're out shopping or something like that and like my wife will go in the store and I'll sit in the car and I'll watch the people going in the stores and I see people putting their masks on and wiping down their carts and I'm like oh my god what is what's going on in our world it's like some weird movie some sci-fi movie and if you saw it in a movie you'd be like oh that would never happen Oh, well, as long as we keep it together and hang in there. So this is actually coming out pretty good. I should wear, <laughs> I should wear white gloves so you can see this better. This would be like those, um, somebody had mentioned that I should do uh, an ASMR video. And I don't know if any of you guys know what it's about. Somebody one of the subscribers like and I, I apologize I'm terrible with names had mentioned it and somebody else commented as well and what it was is I was doing a video of the crystals that I got from AliExpress these guys and so you know this is what you're hearing right <laughs> all the time and I'm like oh I apologize for all the noise right and uh, so they were saying no oh, you should do a video about this so the ASMR is like um, it's kind of like retraining your brain but they use sometimes like they use all the senses right so <laughs> hi Deborah um, they um, they use sounds and a calming voice and colors and repetition. Yeah, so Kathleen, you were one that mentioned it. That's what I was talking about. Uh, so yeah, so I, I had never heard of it, right? So after I read the comments to that video, I went through YouTube and just I just put in SMR bead video. You would not believe the amount of videos out there on this thing. So it's like people... The, the one that I saw was the person had like a, a wicker basket and then they had a bowl of beads and they took a handful of the beads and you could hear them clicking together and they're just like really slow. And I don't know if there, I think there was some music in the background 
and they would take one bead and they'd drop it in the basket and they'd take another bead and they'd drop it in the basket. And then they put a whole bunch of beads in the basket and then they move the beads around and all the like clicking sounds of the beads and the colors. And so you can see how somebody would use that like to relax with, right? <laughs> Hey, Martha, is it strange that I like this sound? You know what's funny? I like the sound, too. Do you know, I feel, like, kind of strange. I like the sound of um, Stephanie from Bronze Pony's voice. And it's not necessarily her voice. It's when she, um, like, I don't know if it's, it's her lips smacking or her tongue or whatever, that clicking sound that it makes. It's so funny. It's weird that I would like that. <laughs> I'm going to go back to, <laughs> to the face. I'm reading the comments. Hi. <laughs> so, uh, uh, Mushi. So nice to see your face and voice. Yeah. Yeah, this is nice. I need a haircut. Oh my gosh. I can't believe. Look at, it's all like different lengths. I'm like, what the heck happened? I think this is from swimming. All the chlorine has damaged my hair. And it's so funny. I straightened this. The bottom um, is more like my natural. It's all curly. But uh, So I managed to get an appointment with the barber. And he does an amazing job on short hair. So hopefully he can fix this mess. But, I mean, it's not very long. I don't know how he's going to fix it. <laughs> But we'll leave it to the experts. Um, so, yeah, this ASMR thing, I'm going to look into it because I still have, like, a huge container full of these. Let me move this one out of the way. I don't think I need this. <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah, Miss Martha hasn't had a haircut since... Uh, June, I um, I actually have a confession. I had my wife cut this, so it's probably why it's a mess. It was even longer than this, and it was all different lengths. So I'm like, just go ahead and cut. She's like, are you sure? I'm like, yep, cut it. But, but I have seen the barber once, because I remember going in having to wear a mask. And then at one point when he was fixing behind the ears, he had me take the, the look, straps off the ears. January. <laughs> wow, Megan. But you have long hair. I used to have hair down to here. And imagine I used to go to work and I would shower before I went to work. So I didn't have time to uh, dry my hair and I always kept my hair back. So I, it would be the end of the day and I'd take my ha the ponytail out and it was still wet. <laughs> but it worked because it, it kept me um, uh, cool during the day. So, so yeah. But your voice along with the air. Yeah, thanks, Kathleen. So Kathleen was saying that the my voice with the ASMR, so I definitely have to look into that. Um, I used to do filmmaking, so I actually know how to edit and uh, do films and stuff like that. I, I it, Film, expensive film equipment is just that, it's expensive. So I used to um, rent it through the Atlantic Film Board Co-op which I was a board member. So I used to, any time that I worked as like a board member where I was at meetings and stuff counted as credits towards renting equipment. So I had hundreds of hours of credits that I could use for equipment rental. So I'm sure if I ever went back, I could get some equipment without having to pay for it. But um, I would, you know, today with our phones and our tablets, there's so much you can use that, uh, to record stuff that you wouldn't have to um, 
have to worry too much and I apologize I'm trying to do something I'm thinking I should be doing something here you know it's funny my cheeks are getting redder but I think it's this light here which is my sad light it's really big and it's kind of over my head and it has special like light um rays that it helps your mood and stuff like that but I think it also makes my cheeks red So Deborah mentioned your hair was down to your waist, haven't cut it in years. Oh, that's awesome. And Megan, when you're 18, you cut it really short. Oh, spiky. I actually, when I retired, I shaved my hair completely bald. And I quickly grew it back. Because <laughs> this is kind of sad. People would people are so nice here in Nova Scotia. I would be shopping and they would come up to me and give me a hug and say, you're going to be fine, dear. And I thought I had cancer. I'm like, Oh my God, I'm going to grow my hair back. It was, they would let me in the lineup, at the grocery store and stuff like that. It was crazy. So let me see what else is. Uh... So Deborah, didn't know what I looked like. <laughs> oh my God, Deborah! wait till you see. I got some two orders from Peggy. Um, her website's called Buy the Beads. <gasps> Swarovski's for about seven cents uh, a buy cone. And some even better deals than that. But I got a bunch of factory packs. I basically, any four millimeter, I cleaned her out. And uh, and then I went back and started seeing if I could. I had problems on my computer. I think I have like um, a thing to prevent cookies and stuff like that. So sometimes like some of the more basic websites that use cookies it won't let me access certain pages so I had a hard time finding stuff on her site so I wasn't able to get everything that I wanted so I made up a third order but they are like I can't say it out loud because my wife would flip out if she knew how much I spent on these Swarovskis and you know after I placed the order, I had like this huge anxiety going, oh my God, what have I done, right? And then I'm thinking, and of course, I'm rationalizing, right? It, trying to get rid of the guilt. <laughs> but they're collectible now. <laughs> I could sell them for more. And I'm like, you're not going to sell them. You're keeping them for yourself. So yeah, when I open those, I think I'm going to need like oxygen next to me and like, and a nurse with me to <laughs> revive me because I'm going to flip out. I can't wait. It's going to be so funny. Uh, Kathleen's saying about my liking my voice. Uh, you know, it's so funny when I was um, going through puberty, when I was a teenager, I had a boy's voice, like a really deep, we used to call it like a Susan Plachette voice. <laughs> and it was so bad people would tease me and back then people like would tease you and think nothing of it now we would never do that and you like you know try and uplift people rather than like yeah hey, yeah you got small boobs and you're <laughs> you got a deep voice and stuff like that that was normal when we were kids right but uh so I stopped talking I wouldn't even say anything but uh, yeah, my voice has changed a bit since then. Now, Brittany from Turquoise Street says she loves my accent. You guys have to tell me I don't sound like or feel like I have an accent, but I'm sure I do. <laughs> so you have to tell me, what does it sound like? If there's any comparison and don't feel like you're going to um, insult me or anything. I, I think it's hilarious. When I was working in North Carolina, so when I graduated, uh, we had a conservative government in Ontario, 
and um, they were doing cutbacks to the healthcare because that was the biggest expense in Canada at the time. So, and that was in 93, I think. And uh, so they had cut back. So our whole graduating class, there was no work. They weren't hiring any nurses at all. And um, the nurses that were working had to take one day off a month without pay. Like, I still thought that was incredible. Now they saved a huge amount of money doing that. But it's like, how do you pick on nurses to work for free? Like, what? But anyway, so our whole graduating class ended up in North Carolina. And uh, there, and I can't believe I put this in wrong. That's, I totally have to pay attention to what I'm doing. Um, so we ended up in North Carolina. I ended up in, um, I ended up in Ahoski, North Carolina. I don't know if anybody knows where that is. But uh, it's close. It's about an hour from Virginia Beach. So it's right on the border. And um, yeah, that was incredible working there. And then I went from there. I didn't, I think I was there for three months and realized I couldn't do the small town. So I ended up in Gastonia, North Carolina. And the reason for Gastonia was um, it's close to Charlotte and... Uh, so a little bigger town, and I got a job working at a mental health clinic. And, uh, ah, <laughs> Neen, I love you. <laughs> oh, my God, that's so funny. How do you know Bob and Doug McKenzie? <laughs> What's the saying they say? Um, Oh, I'm trying to think. What do they say? So they say A a lot. Um, I'll think of it. We, yeah, different story. Bob and Doug McKenzie. So they're two uh, comedians from um, SCTV. And they, they did a spinoff and a movie. So they were two Canadian hosers that would sit and drink beer while they talked on like cable TV kind of thing. Cable access TV. That is so funny. I had the, um, they had a Christmas album and they had the 12 days of Christmas. My true love said to me, and one of them was a beer. So thank you, Deborah, about the Canadian accent with a bit of Southern accent. So back to the story of North Carolina. When I was working there, when I got there, they used to tease me about certain words, like about um, words that I would say that they had a different word for. So I would say, put that in the garbage can. And they'd say, no, it's the trash bin. <laughs> garbage can. <laughs> and then... Um, uh, car wreck was another word that they would say, and we say a car accident. Um, what is another one that they would say? Uh, oh, pop. So we call soda pop, and they call it soda. So anyway, so they would tease me, and I, when I was there, I'm thinking, oh my god, their accents are so thick, and then. After a while, it's like they didn't have an accent anymore. <laughs> I was like, I wonder what that's all about. Then one day I found myself talking exactly like them. And I would do uh, like lines from movies and with the accent. So like Southern movies. And they were like, oh, my God, Emma, you sound just like us. Like, <laughs> So I remember... Um, I worked in a nursing home and I, we had this one patient that would come up to the nurse's station and ask us for stuff and whatnot. And um, he would come up to the nurse's station, ask to go to the bathroom. <laughs> I'm like, okay, go. <laughs> you don't need our help. <laughs> but uh, so I would do imitation of, um, 
Oh, geez. It's, I'm having a hard time thinking because my mind is just all over the place. So it was driving Miss Daisy, Morgan Freeman. So I would do an imitation of Morgan Freeman and I don't mean to be insulting at all. I would just goofing around. <laughs> so I would say, Miss Daisy, as a grown man, I knows when I got to make water. And they were like howling, laughing. Right? <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. We had so much fun. That was, I loved it there. I would have stayed, but uh, my parents got in a car accident and I'm trying to, I think I'm lost my place here. Let me see if I can fix this. So yeah, my parents got it. They hit a patch of um, black ice and the vehicle lost control and they ended up hitting a um, electrical pole that had a transformer on it and the transformer came down on top of the vehicle and uh, so they were trapped inside the car both of them were fine thank goodness but I thought they could have both been gone like that and I'm like I have to go home. I have to be with my family. Like, I I loved it. Again, like I said, I would have totally stayed there. We had so much fun. We used to, the first group of women that I worked with um, in a hosky, we used to, when we worked night shift together, we would go to a restaurant in the morning, like a just a small mom and pop restaurant. We had people, the place was packed. There, there wasn't a seat in the place. And we would sit there making jokes and laughing, like almost peeing our pants, laughing so much. And people were like staring at us like, what is going on with these women? It was so funny. So let me take a look at some of these. Take off. There you go. <laughs> Thanks, Neat. Take off, hoser. <laughs> What, is it, what do you push around the grocery store? Oh, the grocery cart? Is that what you're, you're asking? Kathleen says I don't have an accent, so there. <laughs> um, you know why, Kathleen? Because <laughs> you have an accent. <laughs> Isn't that funny? But it's I, I think maybe because I am um, I'm French that you learn to adjust how you speak to the environment you're in. So like I can totally speak French. You would never know I'm not um, that I speak English like my there's no accent at all. And it's funny when I was younger, my cousins that lived in Quebec used to go, oh, my gosh, you got an accent like an English person. Oh, you have an accent like a French person. <laughs> Hi, Joni. Just pop it in. I'm just testing my laptop with my monitor behind it, which is awesome because I can read the comments and continue beating. Unfortunately, the camera doesn't zoom in, so I can't. Like, I can tilt it down, and I'll show you, Joni. This is what you see. So it's too bad it's not. And from what I see on the screen, it's like you wouldn't be able to tell what I'm doing here. Like it's all just a blur. So I don't know, maybe something like this. Let me see. Yeah, that might be better. But I'd have to, okay, wait. <laughs> That's better, more better. So I'd have to do it like backwards. So I think this would only work for maybe um, stringing stuff. So let me go back to my face. There we go. So yeah. <laughs> Kathleen says, I heard that, Emma. 
I love you, Kathleen. <laughs> yes, I'm very Southern. You know what I find? I find the people in the South, like my experience with North Carolina, if I find the people a lot like the people here in Nova Scotia when it comes to um, the friendliness um, and the like easygoing, laid back attitude. Um, now, I mean, I'm making a generalization. There's a lot of, you know, somebody could make an argument for the opposite, but I, I loved it. And I loved working. I, I worked in a nursing home. I worked in a mental health clinic and then I worked in a nursing home. Yeah, for the most part. And uh, I love working with the elderly. I had so much fun with them. But... Oh, Cindy wants to hear my French. Um, let me see. I'm trying to think what I can tell you in French that would be interesting. Quand j'étais jeune, j'allais à l'école à Toronto et um, les professeurs étaient uh, pensaient que peut-être on ne pourrait pas parler en français après qu'on ait fini l'école, parce que quand on allait jouer, euh, on, on parlait l'anglais. So, il était vraiment inquiet que on, on va euh, parler notre français. So, I was just saying, when we were in grade school, when we went to French schools, um, our teachers were a little concerned that we wouldn't, um, that we would lose our French because when we were living in Toronto, it's all English. And two, um, when we got outside to play, we would talk English. And the teachers are like, no, speak French, speak French. You need to practice your French. And I remember um, dropping off my nephew at school one day and I ran into my grade eight teacher and she was the principal. She's like, oh, you have to stop in my office and I'll be right there. So I went in and we were talking and stuff. She's like, I can't believe you can still speak French and you didn't lose your French. <laughs> yeah, I'm smart. <laughs> I think uh, some of those teachers I found were... Because we were in inner city school, they kind of thought that we weren't that smart. And it's like some of the students grew up in what they call Ontario housing, which is like government housing. So they thought less of us. And it's like, how can you be a teacher and think less of your students? It doesn't matter where they come from. And what does that say about your teaching if you can't uplift your students with education? Yo, that's why you're there. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> let me see. Thank you, Cindy. <laughs> Love my French. Thank you, Joni. You know, I'll have to say, Joni, my one regret about um, working with senior citizens is that when my parents got old, I wasn't able to take care of them. And part of that was they were in another province, so they were quite far away. And the other part was my mom had um, Alzheimer's really bad. And she, it would, like her dementia would, it wouldn't come and go, but there was times where she had some clarity. So she still controlled everything with her and my dad. And they had like a basement apartment at my sister's house. So, um, and my dad would never confront her or 
say anything. So she still controlled the bank cards and the money and stuff like that. It was a nightmare. My poor sister having to deal with that. And both of them were both really sick. And I just, it just hurt so bad that I couldn't take care of them. You know, like to me, that would have been the ultimate gift that I could, it was a gift for me to be able to take care of them. And I felt like robbed that I couldn't do that. But I mean, I called my mom every day and talked to her and she, she was, she was amazing. Like she was awesome when it comes to being in your corner. Even when I did things wrong, she would still like be my, my biggest uh, supporter. I remember saying to her one time, um, you know, I want to apologize for being such a terrible teenager and stuff. She's like, oh, no, you were great. Like, I'm glad your memory sucks. She's like, no, you were wonderful. I'm like, uh, yeah, totally different story. I was, it wasn't that I was bad. It's like I, and I don't think that I try to argue all the time. It's just I had opinions and they were so different from my parents so you know we'd sit and watch the news together and then all of a sudden there's an argument because I'm like I take the opposite side kind of thing but she doesn't remember that or she didn't remember that so but you know I um when I I'm reading your comment Joni about taking care of my parents at least I had uh, um I had some time with them and you know what they came to North Carolina oh my god that was hilarious so I just want to make sure I say hi to everybody um oh my gosh Anita you have the record of Bob and Doug McKenzie's Christmas record that's hilarious they must have sold a lot of those. It was so funny. Hi, Carrie. Happy holidays to you, too. Hi, Cindy. So, yeah, you grew up in the projects. Like, I grew up right next to the projects. And, I mean, the only difference was my dad worked on construction, and he um, was a foreman. So, one, he had money and two he knew how to build things so the house that they bought was five thousand dollars and he totally rebuilt it is like it's it's a two million dollar house now like it's incredible but yeah so I mean I grew up with all my friends who grew up in the projects didn't mean anything except that to me it was like apartments over living in a house but and it was funny too because <laughs> we had mice in our house which they always get in right and so when my girlfriend would sleep over and she was from the projects um she would freak out she's like I'm going home it's like three in the morning she's like I'm going home I saw a mouse <laughs> like they're not gonna do anything to you right <laughs> they're in the kitchen <laughs> So we'd have to walk her home. I'd sleep at her place and it wasn't mice. It was roaches. Oh, and I would freak out. I'm like, okay, I'm going home. So then I knew. <laughs> and of course, if you live in apartments, like unless they fumigate the whole place at once, you're not going to get rid of them, especially in a big city. But so, yeah, my parents... Uh, thanks, Shelly. I don't sound like I have an accent. You're from Calgary. So do people from Calgary have an accent? <laughs> you know, it's funny, Calgary and Nova Scotia, like we have so many people from Nova Scotia that work or used to anyway, work in Calgary. Because there's not a lot of work here in Nova Scotia. Oh, you're an RN too. That's awesome. Hi, Augie. <laughs> So yeah, when I was in North Carolina, I um, I don't even think my parents called. 
to tell me they were coming. Hi, Deborah. <laughs> a mouse is a thousand times better than roaches. <laughs> Definitely. You could have a pet mouse. I don't know about the pet roach. So yeah, my parents just showed up for Christmas one year when I was working in North Carolina and that was incredible. And it just happened that we had a um, ice storm. And uh, so I got a call from work and I worked in, I think it was called South Mountain Hospital in, I think South Mountain. Um, that's another name of a town. But it was just out, it was about a half an hour outside of um, the Hosky. And uh, so they were calling people to say that um, they were getting the National Guard to come and pick us up. I'm just looking at the comments here. And look how great we turned out, of course. Oh, my gosh. Like, it's just ridiculous that something like housing should define you. Ugh. Those were the kind of conversations I would have with my parents because they were still in that other generation of, like, they would say, don't play with those people. Like, how crazy is that? Now, I mean, as they got older, they realized that a lot of the way they thought wasn't right. But, so, yeah, so the National Guard, are they called saying the National Guard was coming to get us to pick us up, to take us to work? <laughs> and I was like, um, so my car at the time was a Toyota hatchback wagon. So it was a really kind of durable, reliable car, and it had all-weather tires on it. it. I could easily drive to work, not a problem. But I was like, oh, I so have to see this. The National Guard coming to pick me up for work. <laughs> Thank you, Augie. She says the Canadians are the nicest group of people I've ever met. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, you had some uh, pretty interesting experiences. If you were, you went to PEI, didn't you? PEI is even like friendlier. They're, they're friendly on one part and then not on another. And I'll explain that in another story. <laughs> but yeah, so, um, so I thought, yeah, I'm going to get them to pick me up. And they came to pick me up, my dad standing outside, like with his pajama pants on and his slippers out in the ice and snow, <laughs> watching me go to work, <laughs> being picked up by this massive, uh, I don't even recognize what kind of vehicle it was. It was like this huge hauler for like a people, people hauler. You get in and it's like one bench on one side and one bench on the other side. And that was it. Like, no cushions, no nothing. I'm, and I'm like trying to hang on. And there's like no suspension. So it's like balancing all over the place in a half an hour. And I was the first person they picked up. So it took me like an hour and a half to get to work with my butt getting bounced around. So it wasn't funny anymore. <laughs> but my dad's like howling, laughing, taking pictures. He couldn't believe it. He thought that was the most hilarious thing. But we got to work. So, so we. I was thinking when I did the earlier um, live, at the end I mentioned something about doing a shopping. So I definitely think we should do a shopping. But... I'm wondering if this will let me open up another window. So let's try that. So I don't know. Did I disappear then? Because it changed on me. I wonder if I do this. Okay. So I've all I've done is I've minimalized it. That's probably not going to do. 
So this is this is me working through the kinks here, <laughs> riding in style. So it's now 20 after eight. I'm probably going to end this soon. Um, so yeah, what I want to do is do some shopping with you guys. So what I would do is um, I'll, I'll try and figure out how I can do this if I have to maybe do it from my tablet, but then I can't see the comments. Augie in Tennessee, you just say snow and everything is closed. <laughs> yeah, I guess. But you know, you know what's funny too? Here in Nova Scotia, I'm shocked. They closed the schools. They, like a couple of days before a storm, it's on the news. And everybody's rushing to the grocery store to get their storm chips. So that's a thing. They actually now sell chips with the name storm chips on it. So this was something that started as, you know, people would stock up on chips um, for a storm. And then <laughs> so everybody would say, oh, did you get your storm chips? And you'd go to this grocery store and the chip aisle was empty. Like the whole aisle, nothing left. <laughs> Oh, Debra, you missed the snow. And you know, I'm complaining about it, but I still love it. And I wanted to get out when my wife was shoveling and she's like yelling at me to get in the house. <laughs> Maybe I'll get some snowballs and throw them to her. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I'm thinking that we could do some shopping. And then maybe what we buy, we'll do a giveaway. So I think that would be a lot of fun. <laughs> Oh, so right. I was talking about the storm. Uh, why is everything white is gone? <laughs> Milk, bread, ice, ice cream and chips. That's hilarious, Marie. Yeah, so they announced the storm on the news. Oh, sorry, I got the mouse in the way. They announced the storm on the news and then like the storm comes, they close the schools. I'm like, I don't remember missing school because of a snowstorm when I was a kid. But we also didn't have seatbelts in our cars. <laughs> and my dad would go around the corner and we'd go all sliding to the one side and we'd say, do it again, do it again, daddy. <laughs> ah, crisps, crisps, yes, in the UK. So my wife and I watch so much UK TV so my, my wife's a big car buff, so she watches a ton of car shows and a lot of the UK shows. That and um, the um, renovation shows and stuff like that. So she's always making, changing the words to the UK words. So like the boot and stuff like that. Carrie, well, my kids are happy when then. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and Sophie. Capital moves, no. Yeah, snow was, uh, and I remember in nursing school, we had uh, an exam one day. The storm was so bad. And I think our exam was at noon. And um, they waited till we got there. And it was, it was so scary trying to get there. And this is, we're used to snow. And we got there to write our exam. They waited till the nursing students got there. And then they shut the, unit, the college down because of the snowstorm. So they did it so that they wouldn't have to reschedule the exam and I mean I understand they were kind of like overboard with like if people are cheating so one time we had a mini exam that was worth 10% of our overall mark so you think 10% that's like your mark goes from now from 100 to 90 and you had to have 60% overall to pass the course so you couldn't afford to lose 10% off the top. So we drive in, me and the person that I was living with at the time for the exam. And uh, as we're driving in, all our friends, the nursing students are driving out of the parking lot. And they're like, what are you guys doing? Like, 
We're like, we're going for the exam. Uh, they're like, uh, the exam's over. We had missed it by a half an hour. It was a mini exam, so it was only a half an hour, but we got the times wrong, so it was off by a half an hour. Oh, my gosh. So we run in, and people are still leaving the exam room, and uh, we ask the teacher if we could write the exam, and they, she was like, well, I can't make that decision, so you'll have to go to the dean's office, and she's like, I don't think it's going to happen, right? But she said, if you go directly to the dean's office and don't talk to anybody or anything, then they may let you. So when we got to the dean's office, by then, I was like freaking out, and um so they had us sit outside and wait. And when they started talking, I think somebody talked to us, one of the teachers, and she said, well, no, we don't know if you've talked to somebody and they told you what was on the exam and you figured out the answers and they were going on and on. So I started crying and I was like bawling my eyes out. And the person I was with was like, normally I would tell you to pull it together. But you know what? The tears are working, so keep crying. <laughs> so they let us write the exam. <laughs> ah, the power of tears. <laughs> Everything comes to a stop in the UK, in Linda, when it snows. Hi, Evelyn. Hi, Linda. <laughs> you guys are laughing. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was... It's so funny. My wife says the same thing now. She's like, yeah, I keep crying. It's working. Actually, she calls it the poor Emma effect. I don't know what it is, but people feel sorry for me all the time. They're always trying to do stuff for me. She's like, I don't get that. <laughs> what can I say? Sweet <laughs> O's. So I'm actually, I've got, let me see if you can see this better this way. Uh, not really. Well, actually, with my shirt on the back, I purposely put a white shirt so that it would light up the surface. So that's as far as I got for the toggle. So actually, you know, it looks too short now. Like I'm, I'm turning it a bit so to see what it would look like. Yeah, it's probably because it's black. You know, it's probably fine. But I'm thinking like to grasp onto to pull it through. I think I might make it maybe three beads longer. It'll look weird. I should check the other one I have and see how long it is, because I think it is longer. So it is only two beats longer. So. And this is the yeah, so, I mean, next to this, it looks really big. This is so weird, the camera. Let me do it this way so you can see. Maybe it's my lighting is not the best. So... So it looks kind of big next to it, but it's a matter of having something to grab hold of. Actually, this feels a little better to grab hold of than this one. Seems a bit tiny. Yeah, so I think I will just do it longer. I have a bunch of little <laughs> starts like this. <laughs> but seeing that I'm getting down in my... <laughs> my little black ones I may have to uh, pull them apart I have another one of these so it's not a big deal but at some point I'm gonna have to take this apart but I've been using this 1g I don't know what you guys opinion is but I saw a video on this and they were saying how it's great to do these type of things with so I've been doing it it's been working fine like that's what this is 
Oh, this turned out really nice. Oh. Ta-da! So I should probably sign off for now. Let me uh, see. So Sue put a sm small bicone on each end. Yes. Oh, that's a good idea. So put a bicone on each end of the... Um, I'd like to do a Swarovski. This is my Swarovski stash of bicones. So let's see if I have any black ones. You know what's funny? I when I ordered stuff, I was like, oh, I'm not gonna order um blacks I or opaques because I what I want is the sparkle in my bicones. <laughs> So I'm like, they, I have to be able to see through them. <laughs> and now I find I pick out stuff and I'm like, oh, these black ones are gorgeous. Or um, I have to tell you guys, I was looking at Peggy's website, Buy the Beads. And this was when I was placing my second massive order. I'm saying, uh, just reading the comments. Um, I like the peyote. Want to do more with it, but currently looking for a job. Oh, good luck, uh, Deborah. I hope you find something. Yeah, so Marie, you mentioned about how big my clasp is. So maybe, see, I started with this because I thought this was the easy part. <laughs> So I took your recommendation and I went and looked at, I think it's um, Off the Beaten Path. And she has actually a playlist of 3D uh, class. So there's one that I thought was really cool. It's like, um, it, it looks kind of like a um, half moon, but on both sides. I don't know if that makes sense. Kind of a, it's a circle and pinched on the end. So there's that one, but I think the square would probably, or the rectangle would work better. So yeah, maybe I should do that first and then figure it because I need the, the toggle part to go past the edges. So that's a good idea. <laughs> oh, time to go help with the grocery shopping. I know that <laughs> that's my job, putting away the groceries. <laughs> Take care, Deborah. Thanks for joining us. And I'm so glad to be here. This is a lot of fun for me too. Yeah, so I can't remember her name from Off the Beaten Path. She has some awesome stuff. Linda, late here in the UK. Time to go to bed. Good night. <laughs> be safe. And definitely do. we'll do this again and spend some money. <laughs> do some shopping. <laughs> Like I need an excuse to shop. <laughs> yeah, so I was looking in here. So these ones, oh, I was going to say, I was looking at Peggy's website off the beaten path. I was making the second order of uh, bicones. Um, <laughs> love you too, Deborah. Thanks a lot. <laughs> and it snowed in Plainfield. Ooh. Hopefully it's not too bad. Oh, that's cool. You did an E-class with her. Oh, I have to look into that. Huh. Very cool. So, yeah, I was going to place an order, and um, I saw she had turquoise, four millimeter bicones, uh, two times AB. And the image that she had was weird. It looked like it was um, like a graphic drawn in image it didn't look like a real image so I went to Google and tried to Google some I went to art beads tried to pull up their theirs theirs look the same um and I looked all over and I think on the Google I managed to find some images that showed the crystals the, the bicones and they looked pretty good and I was like mm, and it was a factory pack so it was like forty dollars I thought Okay, well, I'm going to try it. And um, 
So I, again, I don't remember placing, <laughs> adding that to my order. Anyway, I placed the order. A couple of days later, I'm watching Stephanie from Bronze Pony, and she's talking, like she's showing us what she's going to make. And she's like, oh, and look at this bracelet. These are some of the most beautiful bicones. I just love them. They're turquoise, two times AB. It's like they have little lights inside of them and she's showing it. And I'm like, oh my God, did I order those? Oh, so I go back to the, the site and I can't find them. They're sold out, right? And I'm like, because I had forgotten that I ordered them because I was thinking I looked and I couldn't find anything. So I didn't order them. So I'm like, okay, what do I do? I can't find them. I could send her a message. I'm like, oh, wait a minute. Let me check my order. So I bring up my order. And the last item, I had ordered the factory pack of the turquoise double AB. I was like, oh, my God. You know you spend too much money on beads when you can't even remember ordering something that big. That's crazy. <laughs> Oh my God. So you guys talk about the, um, me getting you guys to buy stuff. My Achilles is Stephanie. When she see, shows stuff, like a lot of the, um, the big thing now that I'm looking for is the oval, uh, like 14 millimeter, maybe it's like 14 by 16. I can't remember the exact size or 14 by 18. She has the, the Swarovski ovals that she uses in her bracelets. And like I did a one of these guys, which is a, a round cab. This is, oh, my cards are falling off the wall. So this is one of those dragonfly from um, Czech glass beads. But I think it would be amazing if it was oval. So of course I'm looking for those and my cards are falling off. I kind of knew that was going to happen. So yeah, I was looking for a, I guess a black or a silver. I have these and I've got a bunch of these from um, Jill Wiseman's garage sale. So they came in a bag just like this and they were in like one of them was just a bead grab bag, I think. And initially I thought there, there must be Chinese crystals. Like there's no way she'd put Swarovski in there. And then I came across one. I don't know if it's in here. And she actually has a label on it and it's Swarovski. So I was like, oh, I'm like digging through my stuff going, where are those ones that she gave me? <laughs> I need to put them in in my lovely Swarovski, I need a better case for them. Uh, I definitely need to organize them when those other orders come. That's going to be crazy. You know, uh, I'm reading, um, Marie, your comment about your bracelets for your size. I was doing that. And then I am terrible for giving my stuff away. Like one, because I'm an athlete. So I swim like almost every day. And um, with my carpal tunnel syndrome, it's hard on my wrists. So um, I love them and I wear them as much as I can, but I'm always taking them off. So I end up, oh, you like that here? Take it <laughs> this and give them away. <laughs> My wrist is, I'll show you my, um, where did I put it? Oh, here. So this is the, the mandrel and the numbers are probably backwards for you guys. But so the average person is about a seven and a half, between a seven and a seven and a half. Wait till you see where my wrist is. That's what my wrist is. That's nuts. Like, I can put my fingers around my wrist. That's how tiny it is. Even the neurologist, when he did the carpal tunnel tests, 
he so, so my like thumbs there so it's actually smaller than that depending on if i'm at the bone it's wider but right here is even or here is even smaller so so yeah the neurologist was like you have really small wrists so hopefully that's not an issue for my surgery because uh i think i will i see the surgeon um january 15th i'm gonna ask him what his experience is with tiny wrists I'm sure he'll be fine but you know what was weird when he gave me my injection so he like held on to my thumb like this and had me pull backwards and then he went in here to inject and um, he couldn't get the plunger down so fine like he kept pressing and pressing finally and he was moving it around but he also has like they do a CT scan and they're watching the screen to see where the needle is so that it goes in the right spot. And uh, all of a sudden it finally went through, but whatever it did, like clearly there was too much fluid for my small hand <laughs> because I was like, Oh my God. He's like, are you okay? And I was like ready to pass out. It hurt so bad, but eh, I'll survive. So <laughs> Joni says nothing to do with your small wrists she has the same problem she gives away her stuff so you know since we're talking Joni I have to tell you that we are going to be doing stuff with the stuff you sent me I feel so bad that I've been kind of preoccupied with my chaos here um, I'm definitely I have <laughs> great close by so I picked a bunch of little ones to um, work on that would that had some kind of I could create like a Christmassy or a winter and it's really blown out here let me see there wintry uh, like a I don't know nice so, th so these ones I can definitely do a really gorgeous bracelet I was thinking a cha-cha bracelet with that one and then these lovely birds. Oh my gosh, like, look at this. There, look at that, that's incredible. And there's a pile of them that, so I have to, I think these are big enough that we could do like bracelet bars with them. But I want to try and think of something that's a little more innovative than that too. So I don't know, I might, they're so gorgeous. I feel like maybe doing um, uh, a bead weaving. So attaching these to, so here is this one here. So I was gonna get started with this button, but have like something like this. Now they're all one-sided, so, so maybe, let's see if I can hang on to something like that and make a bracelet with these. They kind of match the button. And if you were to see these on the screen, like when I have my tablet out, they're just stunning because they have like the, um, a silvery metallic luster on the top sides and there's little flowers and filigree and berries. They're just gorgeous, gorgeous. Yeah, these actually, ah, you know what? We could do a necklace with this. I saw um, Susan from Turtle Soup Beads where she has one that she does, it's kind of like this. And then, so we could do something like that with these. And maybe, maybe take that button off and do just the birds. That would be so beautiful. But look at the pink one too. Look, <laughs> these are, uh, these are so amazing. So yeah, we have to do. There's a ton of them, like the turquoise one with the 
It's a, like a gold. See if I can show you those. So these, yeah, we definitely have to do that. <laughs> yeah, they're Brenda. These birds are incredible. I'll have to, um, now that I brought them out, I think we need to, uh, I'm going to keep these ones out and maybe work on these because they're just gorgeous. And I can't believe how good they match that. But there's a bunch of these ones too that remind me of snowflakes. So I think these would be awesome in some type of bracelet or necklace. It's gorgeous. So yeah, I put a bunch aside that I could work on right away and trying to give me some... The way I work creatively, these are incredible. And they've got the silvery finish on the back so they could be two-sided. Um, the way I work is I, and I should keep these out here. I have them off to the side just to clean off my desk, but is I look at things for a while and I think about things. And then one day I was just like, Oh, I need to do this. And I put it together. So that's those birds. Love them, love them, love them. And there's more little things. And then there's some lovely green ones. So yeah, we have to do these. Uh, I was thinking you could color the white foundation with Copics and just let them dry really well. So that's uh, a good idea, Marie. Um, it's too bad when I bought these, this, like these were big sheets of, um, they were actually called sparkly and I don't know if you can see there's a sparkle there, some sparkles on it. So these are sheets of uh, uh, felt at the fabric store. I think they were like 99 cents each, which was kind of expensive. But anyway, so I bought a couple of them, but I should have got color. I didn't realize how much the white shows through. So like this one here, I mean, turned out it was this part here is really nice. But then in these little kind of crevices, I feel like I have to add something because you can see the white through it. So I'm just going to quickly read. Okay, shower. That's the good of the way. <laughs> and you're still here. <laughs> That's Kathleen. <laughs> You know what? My wife's going to come and drag me out of here. She went into her office to um, adjust her phone for the music playlist for going to the gym tomorrow. And so I'm sure she's going to be out bugging me. Let's go have supper. Yes, definitely. Pendants and tree decor. I wanted to do some ornaments with the stuff that um, that Joni sent me, but it's one of those things I want to be able to see it all the time. So I think that's why I'm thinking like something like this, because even the one that the first one that I did was supposed to be a bracelet. So this is the first one I made. And you can see I put the, and this is stuff that I got at um, the dollar store. It's like a velour. I couldn't get any ultra suede anywhere without like ordering for $4 for a small square. So I was like, yeah, I'm not paying that much or something. But so, yeah, so this is supposed to be a bracelet and I was going to put a clasp and it would be awesome, but it doesn't bend on the, I guess you could bend it in place it kind of bends naturally in these points here um so yeah easily enough i have a a toggle magnetic toggle that would fit in here 
but I love it. So I just display it. I have a little rack with all my, um, I got at the dollar store, it has a little bird on top. I guess I'll show it to you. And it's like to put your bracelets on. So I just do that. So I change these out as I'm working on different things. So I just sit it like this. So then I get to look at it all the time. But really I should put it, like hang it somewhere. And eventually when I redecorate my office, I'm going to uh, do, have something, I don't know if it's gonna be cork board. I kind of like the idea of cork board so that I can, I might paint the cork board so that it's not brown, paint it white or something so that I can change up what I put on there, like some display some of my stuff. But the other thing I might do too is like these, you can kind of see right there, that's a um, bust that I got for a couple of dollars at Michael's. And I have one of my necklaces displayed on it. And I have another one too that has another, but I'd like to do put those all over and then have pieces that I've recently made and stuff to kind of enjoy it. <laughs> Girl Planet says, you are so you, definitely. <laughs> and this is what you get. <laughs> Hi, Sylvia. <laughs> so a funny story about Sylvia. She was commenting on one of Brittany's um, videos like months and months ago. And I uh, said to Brittany, I said, that's my sister. <laughs> that's my sister, Sylvia. Because... <laughs> I, at the time, my sister was like just signing on to YouTube and that's when I was just starting out my videos. So I was like all excited that my sister was going to see my videos. And uh, so when I saw that, I was like, oh, it's my sister, Sylvia. Like why I thought that just somebody named Sylvia would be my sister. <laughs> I don't know. So I would have conversations with Sylvia. <laughs> as if she was my sister now nothing personal because it's youtube right so i was just like chatting about stuff oh yeah that's so gorgeous whatever i was like you're not my sister are you <laughs> that was so funny so yeah so in the meantime my sister has since <laughs> gotten a, an account on youtube so she showed me sent me a picture of her doing the dishes with her tablet in the background, watching my videos. It was kind of neat. So. So Kathleen, yes, I'm looking forward to seeing the necklace you made me and I will definitely make yeah, wear it. Actually, I don't know, I have these other two necklaces that I made. So these are one of the first ones that I made when I got my um, check glass cabochons. And this is actually pretty good. Is <laughs> if I can toot my own horn. But I did a really, uh, I mean, it's simple. It's basically the different bezeling around and it's got the, I have to finish it and put like a the ultra suede on the back. And then the bicones and stuff. And I actually figured out how to put some super duos in there to do my, um, I don't know, is the herringbone or brick stitch on the clasp. But yeah, so there's that one. And then I've got one that's even longer and this one's bigger too. So these turned out incredible. That's funny. I was looking for, <laughs> it's a good thing I didn't remember. I was looking for red crystals the other day and these are rondelles. They're kind of pinched because uh, I, I doubt I would have pulled this one apart, but uh, you never know when you're in a pinch, right? Or a color. So, so that's that. Let me, I am going to keep these close by. Those need to be worked on. I, wanted to work on this one but I I I feel like I need to put this on different fabric or not necessarily different fabric I need to get rid of this all this stuff and I don't know if I should just clip it and pull it off 
Because you know what? That's all it is, is those beads. And then I could redo this part here. So thanks, Marie. The dragonflies, I have a bin full of those dragonflies and multiples of, and I've still ordered more from Scare Beads. <laughs> Whenever they have them on sale, I'm like, I, um. Part of the restock up is I was doing um, home parties of bead making. So bracelets or malas and stuff like that. So people would send me a message on Facebook and say, we'd like to do a party on Sunday, da, 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 da. And I'm like, how many people? And what do you guys want to make? And, and I, I have this big black case that I put stuff in and bring it in and do a tutorial. And a lot of times they would buy extra beads and to do projects on their own and stuff like that. So, so that's kind of in my mind and why I stock up on a lot of stuff when I see it for super cheap. Um, worst if it comes to worse, I can always, you know, resell them, but I'm too much of a hoarder for that. So I doubt that's going to happen. <laughs> but yeah, so let me put this guy away. And so I think I'm probably going to sign off. I, um, we should probably go have dinner and get to bed at a decent hour tonight. It's already nine o'clock at night. And we haven't had dinner yet. Oh, we're like the French. We eat late at night. No, we got up at like noon and ate breakfast at three in the afternoon. Um, so you're saying, Megan, about the peyote being intimidating. You know what? I was really intimidated by it too. And... I'm trying to think what got me over it. You know, I think I worked on some other stuff, like some of the bead weaving bracelets that were what I would think was a little complex. And once I started getting those, then I was like, hmm, I think I'm ready. So I tried the bead weaving. And I, what I did was I started out with this. And all I did was I just took a line of beads and started and thought, okay, I'm just going to see if I can do this. And once you have the first two rows on, I find the rest is easy. Now that the top line and the bottom line can sometimes be a bit confusing because depending on your count, it doesn't stick out. So then you're like, okay, where do I put that first bead? So you kind of have to, figure out how you add that first bead in those situations. But that's what I did. I was like, okay, I'm ready. Give me an amount of beads and a, a, a measurement of what I have to do and do it. And if it doesn't work, just stop. Leave it for a couple of days, think about it, watch a few videos and then try it again. It's definitely worth it because, oh my God, it's so much fun to do. And this stuff, like these are... Um, they are called uh, Toho Treasures Opaque Navy Blue Rainbow. So it has a rainbow and it's hard to see it in this situation. But the that shimmery part that comes up is rainbow. Oh my God, it's so beautiful. So, and it's like, it's neat to, to feel on your hands and stuff. So yeah, it's very kind of soothing as well. Thank you, Sylvia. Okay, see you later, Martha. I'm actually going to sign off soon. I'm just going to try and read up all these uh, each separately for Madonna. Yes, Marie, thank you for that option. That's actually I, a good idea. So do them separate and then bring them together. Because I think, too, I'm trying to mix too much together on one thing and trying to figure it out. So if I can separate it, finish that, then if this one doesn't look, then I can start it and do a different way. So, so I'm being, uh, no, it's okay. I'm cor corralled for an interaction. No, no, no. I'm getting ready to sign off. For no, I, I'm still working on my playlist. So I, oh, I, I need a few more minutes. <laughs> hey, I need a playlist for the workout tomorrow. First workout. I know. My wife is so worried about the first workout. I'm like, since I lost weight, everything's easy. So I'm like, 
Yeah, that workout was great. She's saying, not happy. Right, tell them what I said. No, that's a bad word. Thanks, when, bitch. Honey, you can't say that on YouTube. Oh, yeah, I'll lose my privileges. I should say it more than Oh, geez. <laughs> Who invited her? Well, I live here, too. So, Sue. So, uh... Hello, Emma. Where did you say you bought the large dragonflies? So I buy those from Scarab Beads. And uh, I have a bunch of unboxings from them. And uh, definitely you. take a look. I didn't see... there. Actually, there is some sales right now. Not on the um, cabochons. But, um, man, they have some really good stuff. I, and their shipping is so, so cheap. So, so like, it's like $6.00. And then if you go beyond $50 in your order, it gets down to $3. And $100, it's free shipping. And also make sure that you use the coupon code LOVEBEADS, and it'll give you another 10% off everything. Say so, hello back to someone say hello. Yeah. Where? Uh, Nancy said hello. I'm waving back. Nancy says oh, hello. Oh, hi. <laughs> Yes, oh, so Jen says she's waving back, Nancy. <laughs> and yes, you were cheap. Just like, oh, who says I'm cheap? <laughs> no, you said they're cheap, the, the shipping and stuff. Yes, oh, we're both cheap, right? Yeah, we're both cheap. That's how come I can spend so much money on stuff because I'm so cheap. I don't buy anything unless it's on sale, period, and free shipping. So, like, places that I have to pay shipping, if they don't have a coupon code that covers my shipping... <laughs> It's like, mm, I don't you know. Tell, you can tell the rest of the story. You get to spend so much money because you never talk about how much money you spent. You never had that conversation. No, never. no. She's telling my secrets. Yeah. Yeah, I love the texture too, Maria. The, the peyote is pretty awesome. It's really cool to, to play with. I'm trying to read of oh, the peyote made with yeah beautiful good night good night Brenda <laughs> yeah go eat dinner thank you <laughs> yeah. uh yes peyote Megan it makes it very tactile at ASMR lol <laughs> yeah gotta do I, that's with to do a peyote ASMR video. I'm trying. You got me going now. I'm trying to think. Uh, Nancy says hello yeah. to Jen. And uh, it's called fru frugal. Oh. oh, there she is. There's my wife. <laughs> She's a sneaky sneak. Now we need the rest of the family. The two cats. I don't do video. Yeah, my wife doesn't like doing video. Uh, Sue says hello. Hi. Okay, I'm going. Yep. We have fun. <laughs> oh, he said hello. <laughs> yeah. So, my big dilemma now. So, we go downstairs and we have dinner. That's fine. <laughs> and then we watch some TV. And while we're watching TV, I do my beating. <laughs> So I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do for beating. I kind of like your idea, Marie, about doing separate um, separate cabs for the bracelets. So I might do like cut these out and do them separately for each. And then see about putting them together. Yeah, I might work on that tonight. So, I might have to cut this differently because it's a bit thin for these birds. I don't want to put too much around them, but I don't want it to limit me either. So, I have this one. I should maybe work on this one. Oh. So this one was a, um, this was a brooch and these were earrings and I clipped 
the stuff off. And I thought these were just amazing. So I have them set up and I kind of drawn in the design that I want. And I was going to put a bunch of leaves, but my leaves look pretty sketch. But you know what I find sometimes is I overthink it. And really, I just need to sit down and start sticking the beads on. <laughs> Thanks, Nancy. So, so there's that one. And then there's this one. This. So this was a button. And this was from Scarab Beads. And it is very, um, it, it's got like a turquoise patina in between and then the high points at the outer edge is uh gold and it's hard to see the lighting is not the best so i was going to make that into a bracelet but again I, I maybe i'm overthinking so it just i just need to start and like you said marie do it simple and then add to it yeah i think you're right Simple is the best because I'm, I'm getting stuck in my head. And then it's like they sit on my desk and I don't do anything with them because they're too. But you know what I might do is use this stiffy for the bird to cut out so that I have a big section. I might do that. So let me Do that and I'll glue them and maybe work on them and you'll see something tomorrow. So I've got that I can work on. And oh yeah, one of Joni's beautiful birds. So I might glue it on this way. That would give me more space around. Actually, this way is fine too. I should just get my bin. I, I have another big sheet of this. I'm cut that out. Because that's the other problem I run into. Um, this one's not too bad. This section's bigger. I'm worried that I don't have enough space on either side. I start putting beads and then I'm, this must be the same size, probably the same, yeah. So my sheet was a different size. Yeah, I'll just cut another piece because this is not the same. Uh, it's not that much a difference. It's just a tiny bit difference. Oops. Do it, do it. I'm going to glue it right now because if I don't glue it, then I'll be like, oh, I can't do it because it's not dry. I still feel like it needs more space. So I'm going to cut a bigger piece out with these guys. Okay, so I'm going to say goodnight and go eat. <laughs> Good night, Kathleen. <laughs> Thank you, you're a sweetheart too. Yes, Marie, I had to get out of my head. And you know what's funny? When Brittany was having issues with her, um, before she started her bracelet um, um, challenge, the 100 day challenge, she talked about uh, good night, Joni. Uh, good night, Nancy. <laughs> good night, Sylvia. Um, she talked about um, having issues with motivation. And I told her, just grab your beads and maybe do stretch bracelets because you don't have to think about it. You just start weaving some bracelets onto some stretch cord and it will get you past that. Good night, Maria. Good night, Nancy. Good night, Augie. <laughs> Good night, Marie. Okay, I'm going to sign off and see you guys tomorrow. Um, yeah, maybe we'll get some deliveries tomorrow and uh, watch me pass out. <laughs> Take care. Bye for now. Good night, Carrie. Good night, Neil.